Hey, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And uh, in June of 2016, I did a video called Cancer is Lactic Acidosis. And I was just exploring and understanding the physiology of the cells and how they can go from using mitochondria to make energy into making energy outside of the mitochondria, which is either glycolysis or lactic acidosis, which is the most common mechanism of chronic disease. And I have a bunch of videos on that, but just bear with me on this. And then two years later, June of 2018, I did a video on how heart uh, cancer, uh, primary heart cancer is very rare. So a cancer to form right at the heart, it's really rare because of the physiology of the heart, what the heart has to do. And at that point, I really understood how the mechanism of cancer uh, forms, like the mechanism of how it's made. But with this video, I'm going to talk about the cause causes. And it's going to be parasites, mold, sugar. And those are the three. I'm going to give you two great success stories on cancer. I'm going to show you some research. I'm going to show you some books. And this is a compilation of my career. Basically, I just like to study the human body, what goes wrong with it and how to fix it. Um, my license is chiropractic. I deal with nutrition and herbs and homeopathy supplements. And that's it. I don't do any surgery. I don't prescribe any drugs. And um, as I continue through my career now, it's been 25 years, I can, I'm, fi I'm trying to find the borders. Like, what point does nutrition not work anymore? Like, if, if there was infinite knowledge on how the body can heal itself and with certain tools, like, where is that boundary? Where do we hit that, that final uh, stop where, where nutrition doesn't work? I've not found that yet, and I keep looking. So let's go over some of these uh, success stories first. The first one is a patient that I've been seeing just since January of 2022. Right now, it's the very end of April 2022. So January, February, March, April, four months. And uh, she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer stage four in uh, December of 2021. And she had metastasis to the liver. So five tumors in the liver and one big tumor in the pancreas. And um, when she started to see me, I saw that her A1C was 5.7. So that's the long-term measurement of diabetes or high blood sugar. And most medical doctors would say that 5.7 is perfectly fine. I don't agree at all. I think it's diabetes. And it should be less than 5.4. Uh, 5.0 would be a lot better. Uh, but you know, 4.9 to 5.4, in my estimation, is completely fine. Now, uh, she's 81 years old. She's had a very healthy lifestyle other than eating bread every day. And it's whole, whole grain bread or Ezekiel bread or something quote unquote healthy. And so when I talked to her about her diet initially, I just said flat out, you have diabetes. And she said, nobody else has ever said that. I said, well, I'm saying it. So let's get you into ketosis. The opposite of high blood sugar is ketosis. It's low blood sugar and then your body's burning fat. So she started right away eating liver every day and red meat every day. And she um, is using the urine sticks to measure ketosis in the urine. And uh, within a few weeks, uh, she was showing some coloration on the urine stick, meaning that she's in ketosis. So now it's been four months. And um, actually, I have her results from last month. So within three months, her cancer marker in the blood test, which is called CA19-9, it went from over 10,000 to now it's down to 197. I want to show you what these tumors look like according to the imaging from December 28th of 2021 until the end of March. Um, looking at these uh, one, two, three, four tumors right here in her liver, they're all down in size by about half, except one is completely gone. So there's a total of um, five tumors. This one says a prior caudate lobe metastasis is no longer visible. And there's no new liver metastases. So there's no new tumors forming. Also, the tumor in her pancreas is more translucent. So now she is doing chemotherapy. They're doing injections. And initially, uh, I don't remember if it was once a week or every other week, but now it's every three weeks. But to have stage four pancreatic cancer with meds to the liver, I mean, that's not a good prognosis at all. I mean, three months, four months, like mm, not even that. Um, she was concerned about losing weight. And initially she lost a pound 
and then she lost another pound. But then in the past week, she's gained it back. So her weight stayed, <clears throat> stayed the same, and that's been great. Her energy's good. She can exercise every day, um, and she does exercise most days. So what's what made this special? I mean, ketosis has been shown to kill uh, some cancer cells, uh, actually most cancer cells, but not all. And you don't want to do ketosis with prostate cancer, for example. And um, the other aspect of this case is that, you know, I do the muscle testing biofeedback um, procedure to, to discover problems within the body. I've not found parasites, mold, fungus, bacteria, virus, toxins, metals, chemicals. Her body's clean of those things that, you know, I, I'm normally pulling out of people. I'm detoxing their body. I'm getting parasites to come out when they blow their nose or when they go to the bathroom. So that's a bonus. It makes my job so much easier because uh, all she had to do was get into ketosis and um, she will continue to do well. And these images will show will continue to show improvement. Now, the goal of the uh, CA19-9 cancer marker is zero. And here's the actual first reading from January. It was 10,406. And then in March, it was 462. And then, like I said, this month of April is 197. And when I read this book, Ravenous by the author is Sam Apple, um, it really solidifies that uh, fructose is the problem. And this was known before 1913. I've talked about this before. It's an absolute must read. If you practice any form of healthcare, I don't care if it's talk therapy, massage therapy, acupuncture, drugs, uh, chiropractic. This is the history of medicine right here and the destruction of the so-called Western diet or diets of modern civilization. It's fructose and table sugar is half fructose and high fructose corn syrup. Of course, it's fructose. And that information has been ignored for so long. Why is that? Because people love their sugar. But now we have things like monk fruit, stevia, artificial sweeteners, uh, xylitol, sugar alcohols like that. So you can use those to get off um, the fructose. And um, one aspect of this is that your body has bitter receptor sites and sweet receptor sites, not just in the mouth, but all the way down through the digestive tract. So um, I encourage people to use these artificial sweeteners if they need to, to get off sugar. Most people don't need them. And then eventually you don't want to be having sweetness in your food on a regular basis at all, maybe once a month or something because you want the bitter receptor sites to be dominant and more active than the sweet receptor sites because that makes your whole, whole digestive system work better. Now for this patient, I gave her some supplements and they're based on this book, How to Starve Cancer by Jane McClelland. And I've talked about this too, and this is the new version. She just released this very recently. And she has in here what's called the Metro Map. And what that is, it's a collection of um, therapies that block feeding pathways. Cancerous cells eat food, and those foods are fat, protein, and sugars. And there's known pathways in the biochemistry of the human body, and you can block those pathways. So in the previous version, there were 18 pathways, and now I think there's 21. So we have to update our knowledge on that. I, I do too. I just bought this book a few weeks ago. As a matter of fact, I just made, met Jane about three weeks ago from the recording of this video. She came to Detroit from the UK for a seminar put on by the International College of Integrative Medicine. Which brings us to a third case um, that was presented at that seminar. But before we get to that, let's talk about the second case. And this second case is a patient that came to the office three years ago. I've never met her. She's seeing Dr. Amanda, who works in my office. And when this patient came in, uh, Dr. Amanda said to me, what do I do? Because this patient had um, endometrial cancer with metastasis to various locations throughout their body. And they really had a hard time figuring out, well, was it actually from the endometrium or did it originate somewhere else? Maybe it came from some other organ. But this patient had ascites, which is bloating, which is fluid retention in the gut. And they would have to draw out like five liters every two weeks. She'd go to the hospital and get that taken out. And um, she had cachexia. She was losing weight. 
and the doctors gave up on her. They tried all kinds of whatever chemotherapy and whatever they the oncologists use, and they were done. They were just they couldn't do anything else, and th- there was no success there. So when Dr. Amanda asked me, "Well, what do I do with this patient?" I said to her, "Well, the famous doctors of the 1900s and earlier that they got famous because they went to people's deathbed." And they saved their life. And what did they use? What did they give those patients to save their life? It was raw animal food. So Dr. Weston Price used uh, cod liver oil and June butter. So organic butter from cows that ate grass in June. That's when the grass was most vital. And there's a guy named Dr. Ajunas. Uh, he wasn't a doctor, but Ajunas Vanderplants is a weird name. But he, he was very sickly at the age of 20. He was uh, considering suicide. And he was camping um, in the desert, and his dad always told him, "If you go hunting, you can't eat the, the blood or the animal raw. You have to cook it. If you eat the animal raw, you will die." So he had a rabbit that he caught, and in his story, he said that coyotes caught it for him, and they brought the rabbit to him. But whatever, and he ate the rabbit in order to commit suicide. And he goes to he's walking to his tent. He's going to sleep in his sleeping bag, and as he's walking to the tent. He feels this lightness come over him, and he's like, okay, great. This is what it feels like when, when you're going to die. It feels actually pretty good. So he goes to bed, wakes up in the morning, and he's not dead. And he realizes because he ate this raw rabbit, and so he started working on farms, and he would eat raw butter and eat raw dairy in exchange. You know, that was his payment for working on the farms, and he put on 50 pounds of muscle, and he gained um, his health back. So he went on a tour in the 1990s, and um, was giving lectures on health. He told a story where there was a woman that talked to him on the phone, and she was dying from emphysema. And she said, this is the weekend I'm supposed to die. It's a Friday, and I should be dead by Sunday. What do I do? And he said, eat as many raw eggs as you possibly can. So then on Monday, she called him back, and she said, okay, I did what you told me to do. What now? And he goes, wait, what? You, what do you mean? She goes, I was supposed to die this weekend and I'm not dead. So what do I do next? And he goes, well, what did you do? And she goes, I did what you told me. I ate as many raw eggs as I possibly could. She ate 36 raw eggs per day for the weekend, during the weekend. And it saved her life. And um, that's another, so another story about a famous doctor saving people's lives with raw animal food is Dr. Mayo of the Mayo Clinic. He had what was called the raw milk diet. So people would come to his clinic and lay in bed and they would feed him a glass of raw milk every hour. And that was it. And and that's how he started his practice. So I told this to Dr. Amanda and I said, she needs to eat something raw. It could be raw liver, raw eggs, maybe all of it. Uh, certainly raw butter, would, you know, if you, she wanted to do that. So the patient decided to eat raw eggs. And she created a recipe to make it make it taste good for her palate. And she was eating 18 raw eggs per day. And that was the beginning of her healing. Now, in the meantime, Dr. Amanda had to do a lot of other work for her. And now here it is three years later, and she, the patient is still eliminating parasites. And they had to tackle uh, mold and fungus. They had to drain out the liver and clean out the kidneys and do a lot of things to get rid of the ascites, the bloating, the fluid retention in the gut. And um, so this patient is doing better now than last year. And the point is, she's still alive. I mean, maybe the prognosis was one month or, or within six months or something like that. And she refused to go back to get a scan of uh, her body to find out if the tumors were gone or not. And um, she finally acquiesced. And I, I, think, I think it was last year she went back. And they did a scan and they found no cancer, no tumors at all. And so she keeps getting healthier and healthier. And now she's only eating 10 raw eggs a day. So these are magical stories. And the difference with this patient versus the previous patient I told you about is that this patient has all the factors such as uh, mold and parasites. And then I don't know what her diet was like, but I'm assuming it wasn't good. But now she's been in ketosis. For you know, for most of three years, and so there are just multiple factors there with that patient, all treated naturally. She never took a drug, no um, cancer therapy drugs, no 
um, anti-parasitic drugs, which we'll get into here in a moment. So two great successes. And one was simple for me. Uh, so far, very simple. No parasites, no mold, just diet. And the other one, not very simple, including parasites and mold, other factors, and diet. So multiple factors versus just one factor. Either way, these um, cancers are not good, but they we have great success with both of these uh, uh, patients. So now I want to talk about this weekend seminar that I went to. And one of the featured speakers is Dr. Simon Yu. His website here is preventionandhealing.com, preventionandhealing.com. So here he is. Look at that. Um, he doesn't take from anybody, including Fauci. Just look at him. On his website, he goes back 20 years or more with testimonials. So he's been doing this for quite a while. And he has published this, uh, published right here. It says anti-parasitic and antifungal medications for targeting cancer cells. Literature Review and Case Studies by Frederick uh, Guilford and Simon Yu. Is it possible to treat cancer as a neglected infectious disease? Is cancer a metabolic disease with tumors growing and metastasis spreading like a metabolic parasite? That's a great term right there, like a metabolic parasite. So it may sound far-fetched, but there is growing evidence to support this idea that can change the way we treat many types of cancers. And I'm looking for some medical doctor around Ann Arbor who can do this, who can prescribe these drugs. At the seminar, I was uh, sitting next to a woman who, um, she's not too far from me, and she's very excited learning this information. And I said, are you going to start prescribing these medications? And she goes, oh, no, I'm trying to preserve my license. So doctors like this can uh, be under threat by the licensing board because you know how it is, politics, right? So multiple signs of parasites. Parasites speak many languages. So all kinds of intestinal problems, um, weight loss or weight gain, uh, sexual dysfunction, migraines, vision problems. My concept of migraines is it's always an infection. Now, I got to give you my legal disclaimer. I don't treat infections. It's not my license. I help the immune system take care of organisms by providing immune system support. Uh, craving for food. Bruxism is grinding of the teeth. There's allergies. Allergies in the face, seasonal allergies, food allergies. They come from parasites, immune deficiency syndrome, uh, mental behavioral problems, and um, kids that are uh, hyperactive. Yeah, sugar for sure, maybe mold, maybe fungus, but parasites. Doctors need to know this and they have to treat it correctly. So, uh, pain, hip, knee, um, abdominal pain. Waking up at night, bed wetting, uh, itchy butt. Okay, so now he doesn't do muscle testing, but he uses an electroacupuncture machine where they're testing the electro uh, conductive flow in acupuncture points and meridians. So let me scroll through, and here's the guy that invented that in the first place. Doc, uh, Dr. Reinhold Voll came from Germany in the 1950s. And you can see that he's got a little acupuncture style needle uh, hooked up to a wire and he's hitting different acupuncture points on this person's foot. So 1950s and um, this was an offshoot of many other devices that are on the market right now for measuring a wide variety of things that are going on inside the body. And you can hit different acupuncture points in the hand, for example, or in the foot. So with this device, he finds locations of infections throughout the body. And here's a case of a 47 year old woman with rheumatoid arthritis and a dental infection and then right breast cancer. You can see with thermography that this discoloration right here, it's red and two, it's too red and too yellow compared to the left side. And over the course of time, you can see the changes and it becomes more blue and that's more correct like that. But the point is she tackled a lot of infections and um, got some bad root canals taken out and maybe Dr. I don't know exactly what she went on, but probably some antiparasitic and antifungal medications. Went to a good holistic dentist, identified where the bad root canals were, also known as um, cavitations in the jaw. So hollowing with uh, bacteria and other organisms hiding in the jaw. Here's another example of a woman with breast cancer. She had it three times, kept going through standard medicine, and of course, they're not getting to the cause. But Dr. Yu found 
infections in her mouth. And you can see the red bars here. This is from a saliva test. And she has way too many pathogenic bacteria in her mouth. Couple that with too much mercury on this um, hair now, or urine, urine test. And then too much platinum right there. The platinum actually came from the chemotherapy drugs. And on top of that, okra toxin A from mold, that's a mycotoxin. This okra toxin A is the worst one of all the mycotoxins. It is known to cause cancer. So she needed detoxing. She needed her um, oral microbiome fixed up. And I did a video about that in September 9th of 2021. And I hold up this book. And the title of that video is Cholera Up Focal Infections Causing Systemic Disease. You have to treat the mouth. If you have pathogenic bacteria here, you're swallowing all day. And you keep, you keep reinfecting your body in causing ulcers, causing breast cancer. Some thermography images show an infection in the jaw and then a heat map or a heat trail that goes from that infection right down to the breast cancer. And these bacteria can also get to the heart and cause placking. The placking is caused by the biofilm or the mucus that the bacteria make. It's their home. Just like fungus, parasites, bacteria, they all make mucus and they live in it. Well, that mucus becomes hardened. It becomes calcified. Therefore, you get placking here. You get kidney stones, gallstones, arthritis, stiffness in the body. Here's another patient from Dr. Yu. This patient had cancer of the left leg, diagnosed November of 2009 in the electroacupuncture meridian assessment machine. You can see right here, green is good, blue is low, red is high. You want all these bars to be green. So you have to treat the things that need to be treated. And this person had to go through the protocol, tackle the parasites, fungus, if there was any infection in the jaw, get rid of that. And then six months later, the tumor in the left femur was completely healed. And you can see with the uh, scanning with the acupuncture machine, uh, um, everything is green except for there's three of them that are not. So he lists out some of these common tools that he uses that are natural and herbal for parasites. And uh, black walnut hull, I mean, these are very common. Uh, health food stores on online, I carry them. I do the muscle testing, figure out what works best for the person. And I'm incorporating this information right here, meaning that does it say in the medical literature that, for example, Artemisia and Nua will take care of a certain particular um, uh, cancer or, or starve the cancer from its uh, feeding pathways. Mimosa pudica, that's in para one. That's the uh, fourth from the bottom. And then essential oils. Uh, throw on top of that, these are medications that Dr. Yu is using, mebendazole, albendazole, praziquantel. Some of these are over-the-counter, like pinworm medication. Uh, there's ivermectin, uh, doxycycline antibiotic, and zithromycin, another antibiotic. So I asked him this question, which I was very intrigued about because the, med the, the research shows that these medications actually kill cancer cells. And, but I asked him afterwards, do those medications kill cancer cells or do they kill the parasites and the mold that causes cancer? And his answer was, these drugs kill the organisms and then the cancer goes away because the organisms are gone. So that was such a profound statement for me to hear. And here's a protocol that he uses and he cycles people through this. So let's say there's five antiparasitic drugs. And then a couple of antifungal drugs, like the nystatin at the bottom of that, and fluconazole. And then you take a break, and then you do the medications again, antiparasitic, antifungal, then you take a break. You may have to do that three times, for example. And those are the doses that he uh, was presenting. Now, I want to share one more story, and this is his patient. And this guy had bad infections in his teeth. He had parasites and fungus. And his diagnosis of the cancer was in the armpit. And most cancers or a lot of cancers will grow like a tumor and become a space occupying lesion. A sarcoma on the neck, it makes the neck get bigger. And, um, but in this case, the cancer was growing, was, was eroding the tissue. So these are two types of pathology. You can have a cancer that liquefies the body, or you can have a cancer that grows fibrous tissue or some other kind of tissue and uh, occupy space. So this person had um, gone through all of Dr. Yu's protocols and um, this, okay, look at the screen. Be care, be ready. It's really gross. 
This is the guy's armpit. And after six months or more of treatment, everything was done that Dr. Yu had for him. And it had stopped growing. And now the next step is to get chemotherapy. Now go to the oncologist and get the platinum-based drugs or whatever other drugs that they're going to use for that type of cancer. And it worked. And that was five years ago. And now the guy's still around. He's doing fine. So if you're really grossed out easily, close your eyes. I'm going to scroll down and you're going to see this. But you can see how it like caves in. It goes into the armpit. And, um, but that's a, that's a form of cancer. And up on, on the upper left, that's his chin, and he's facing to your left. So, okay, I scrolled away so you can open your eyes. Why are parasites overlooked as a problem? Because we assume that they're only in the third world, not I, but the medical profession. Also, stool analysis for parasites is simply um, not reliable. And I've seen this over and over again in my career where a patient puts the worm from the toilet into the sample bottle, then they ship it to the lab. And it comes back negative. The report is negative. I've seen that eight or nine times in my career. Most parasites are outside of the intestinal tract. They're in your brain. They could be in your muscles. Of course, the largest organ in your body is your muscles. They could be in your lymphatic system. They swim around and they go wherever they want to go. So cofactors such as pollution uh, in the environment and poor nutritional status, that, those are factors. And then animals at the home. Um, I had a cat die eight years ago. He was my best friend. I loved him, but I tested high for Toxoplasma gondii. That comes from cats. I also tested high for um, parvovirus. That comes from dogs. So I'm not replacing an animal. I, and life is better with a with a pet. Maybe I'll have one later. But I was so overwhelmed with mold in 2016. I'm not going to get one right now, and I may not get one for many many years. So parasites have complex life cycles, and they're e and their ecosystem in the body. They can go from a worm, they lay eggs, you get larvae. Uh, they have various uh, forms of life cycle in your body. And um, they can be hard to get rid of depending on their life cycle. Parasites are deceptive and they adapt and they're difficult to eradicate. And they actually mimic your genetic code. So the immune system is trying to find a parasite. Number one is hidden behind mucus. Number two, it has genetics that look like your genetics. So your immune system is a little bit confused with that, and uh, they're just hard to get rid of. So, so it goes into some detail about some of these medications. Here's ivermectin, for example, what it kills. You can hit pause and you can read that. And then, but you can't just do it alone. Um, he mentions albendazole, prazaquantel, which is like pinworm medication. You can even get that over the counter. And I've had patients do that with great success, pooping out worms, whereas they had problems getting parasites out with just the herbs alone. So you can combine these therapies. Here's antibiotics. He talks about that, antifungal medications. Doug Kaufman is a great resource online for information about mold and mycotoxins. There are relationships with uh, parasites and other organisms. Let's not forget about the mouth. I already talked about that. But viruses, nanobacteria. I've studied a lot about nanobacteria and how that can be a, a major ca cause of Placking in the arteries, causing coronary calcification. Um, intracellular parasites, meaning Lyme, organisms in the cells. Cell wall deficient bacteria, that would be similar, like mycoplasma, doesn't have a cell wall. Uh, spirochetes, which is the original Lyme organism called Borrelia burgdorferi. Prions are not alive. They come like mad cow disease is a prion. These are organisms that um, uh, need to be tackled but the big ones, once you get those parasites out, you're really in good shape and getting better and better. The parasites harbor all the bad things. They are the dump truck of your body. They drive around and they drip, you know, like the dump truck drips nasty smelling liquid onto the street. There's plastic bags flying around and it's dirty and it, it just travels wherever it wants to go. And it, 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 it cleans up garbage, but it also drops off garbage and it causes a lot of symptoms and it could cause cancer. So uh, fungi-related mold, yeast, and candida can be in the parasite or on the parasite. They've actually seen yeast uh, strips or uh, yeast sort of like placking. I want to use the word placking on the parasite. And you can cut it open and find yeast on the inside. It's really gross, but this is life. You're on planet Earth. There may have been another time in your existence where you weren't on this planet. But right now, you're on this planet. 
And this is the kind of stuff that you deal with. You either are a parasite or you have them. <clears throat> okay, so that's my uh, talk on what I've been studying recently. I couldn't not share it. I had to share it. I'm sharing this information on YouTube, even though they've censored me many times. I hate YouTube. Oh, wait, is that hate speech? I'm confused now. But um, I'm happy to share it with you. And uh, don't try to turn me in to the state of Michigan claiming that I'm trying to cure cancer or treating cancer. I don't. I'm not doing that. I've already been investigated by the state of Michigan. Some whack job on Twitter turned me in. And the uh, state of Michigan determined that I'm not treating cancer, which is a true statement. I supply nutrients and dietary advice to people who happen to have cancer. And I do that with all my patients. People have their diagnosis. They get that from their medical doctor. Um, every single one of my patients has a medical doctor. They're taking their drugs or they're not. That's based on them. People ask me about drugs all the time. And I say, I don't study drugs. I don't prescribe them. I don't take people off of drugs. I'm here to talk about herbs and supplements and diet. There are 1 million medical doctors on this in this country that will give you whatever drugs they want to give you. They would be happy to drug you. They would be happy to answer your drug questions. What's deficient in this country is knowledge on nutrition and supplements and proper detoxification and diet, diet, diet. Um, all the universities and all the medical schools, they need this information that I'm telling you. So anyways, if you want help with your health, you can call my office. Um, and I do have the seven step blueprint to optimal health, which is an online course. And if you're not a patient of mine, you can be a part of that. And it's over a hundred videos. And it took me two years to put it together. The cost is 147 a month, or you can have a lifetime membership of $1,200. And I, it comes with me on zoom live twice a month. And it's during those zoom calls where I give out the latest and greatest information, uh, patient success stories. And I, and I answer your questions personally. Otherwise, if you need direct help, more one-on-one -on -one care, um, specific information for you, then you can become a patient of myself or any of the other practitioners in my office. Uh, we do phone calls. We do in-person visits. We have travel packages where people come in from out of state and we see them for a number of visits in a short period of time, like in a day or three days. Then you fly back home and then we follow up with phone calls. So it's been fun doing this career. Um, a few days ago was my 25th anniversary of graduating from chiropractic school. That means I'm old. It only seems like 15 years though. But, and I feel like I've, I've accomplished something in my 25 years. I've actually gotten somewhere with uh, the knowledge that I've gained in the last few years. Um, and just pushing myself to learn more and to supply uh, information and tools for you to get better. I'm in the free market. I don't take any insurance. And that sets me aside from all the other doctors who take insurance because they can treat you and never get, and never get you cured. And yet they're still paid. When I did take insurance prior to 2005, I would fill out all these insurance forms. Never did they ask the question, will the patient get better? Or when will the patient get better? They never asked that question, which was very disappointing to me. So when I got rid of all the insurance, I'm beholden to you and you only, right? I, I don't have an insurance company directing me as to what to do. I mean, these insurance companies had such sp specific protocols that I had to follow as a chiropractor. And uh, it was ridiculous. And so I got rid of that. In 2005, I graduated in 1997. So I had to increase my supply of information and tools because your demand is so high. And you just keep your demand, it keeps coming up and up and up and I have to keep up with, you know, increasing my supply to give you more information. And I actually just discovered something really cool in the last two months. And I'm going to make a video about that and I'll share that with you very soon. Okay. See you at the next video.